worship with you. We're so happy to be all here together, but we need everybody to keep their mask up nice and over your nose because we're all here and we're going to praise the Lord today and I hope you can enjoy what the kids have prepared for for so long. Um, I'm going to give it up now to our announcer, Bryce Miller. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is October 14th, and welcome to today's edition of The Good News. First, let's begin our program of prayer. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day and the opportunity we have to spread the good news of salvation to everyone in this room. Amen. Amen. Okay, so it's time to introduce you to our host. Get up your host, Jada and Caleb. Florida have some exciting news today. Yes, we sure do, Jaden. We all know that in the beginning, God created everything, right? But do you know what time of day Adam was created? Um, not at all. When? A little before evening. <laughs> We sure do. Let's check it out. Here, Adam, if Santa came and told me that if we eat this fruit, we'll have wisdom like that. Didn't God say not to eat from that tree? Didn't he say if we eat it, we would die? Yeah, but the Santa said everything would be just fine. Don't you want to know things like that? I sure do. Let's eat up. Adam, he, water, has stopped eating from the trees with I man he got to not eat. Eat baby do it. It's all her fault. Both of you must leave my garden immediately. Adam and Abel's cousins came to their disobedience.
Yes, if that was the end of the story, then that would be really bad news for us all. I think we better bring out our guests because they have some good news. Today we have some great authors that wrote about their times together. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. for us all. Matthew, let's begin with you. So you're a tax collector that wanted to prove to the Jews that Jesus was the promised Messiah. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, I have some great stories in my book, and I encourage your audience to read it. Definitely so. Tell us why you are here today. God was disappointed with Adam and Eve, but he never stopped loving them, and he had good news. He was going to send a rescuer. Does anyone in the audience know who this rescuer was? Salvation. So this 
is all written in your books. Do you need to learn more about salvation? Yes, yes. What do you call these books that are named after you? Gospels. My book is called Matthew. My book is called Mark. My book is called Luke. My book is called Fred. Fred? Just kidding, it's called John. <laughs> There's nothing that I can ask you. It's all in our books. He's more powerful, he's more pow powerful than sadness, shame, disease, disaster, or even death. <coughs> this good news is so powerful that all of us, Jesus' friends, told everyone about it. And those people told people, and those people told people, and so on, and so on. And that's why we're here today. That is happening right here, right now. Jesus has us. us. One last round for these amazing men. but I'm sure glad they wrote those books.
enjoyed the show so far? Yeah. It is very cool to have those special men who are friends of Jesus come all this way to give us the good news. Yes, it was. But well, we have another surprise in store for you. We have one more friend of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our very own president of North Star Christian Academy and pastor of First Bible Baptist Church, Pastor Kevin Pesky. So nice to have you join us here today. We have been hearing all about the good news and how God rescued us by sending Jesus to take the punishment for our sins. Pastor, we invite you here today to help us learn how to share this good news. What can we do? All right, great. Such a good question. How do we share the gospel of Jesus Christ? Good morning, everyone. How are we all doing this day? Good. I'm so excited to see your faces, and uh, what a great job that the sixth grade did with the chapel this morning. Let's give them a big round of applause. There was, uh, there was a time in my life, not that long ago, that I went to Africa. And one of the reasons that I went to Africa was to tell people to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there was a day that I was in Africa, and I thought to myself, I want to, I want to find a way to help people know Jesus. And so I began to go through this idea of reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to show you what came to my mind and what I ended up doing. I'm going to read from the book of Acts chapter 8. It's a short story. It's about two guys. And it says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet, and the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Philip ran thither to him, heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou? what thou readest, and he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this, and he was led as a sheep to the slaughter like a lamb, dumb before the shears, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself? or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began in the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let's pray and we'll get started. Father, we're grateful for this morning. Thank you for this chapel. Thank you for these sixth graders and the excellence that they have exhibited here this morning. Lord, I pray that you would speak through the teaching and the preaching of your word, that God, we would be people that are better at sharing the gospel today than we were yesterday. Would you empower us? Would you inspire us? God, would you influence us with your goodness, with your greatness, with your authority? We pray and ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As I look through this scripture, I'm reminded that in order for us to share the gospel, it's going to take all of us. Every part of us is going to be involved in this. As I read through there, you probably read along with me in verse 26. It says, The angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go. And then in verse 29, he also says, The Spirit said unto Philip, Go near. The very first thing that we're going to need to do if we're going to want to share the gospel is we're going to have to have some feet that are willing to move, feet that are willing to go places, feet that are willing to take us. A lot of times people think, well, I would love to tell somebody about the gospel if they walked up to me and said, will you tell me about Jesus? But that's not usually how it works. In this story, it took the Lord to speak into this man's life, and then this man had to take a step in order to get where the person was that the Lord wanted him to speak to. How many of you all have feet? 
I'm going to show me your feet. Wiggle your feet for me. Let me see some feet wiggling. It looks like those are some pretty, pretty good feet. If you are going to share the gospel, you're going to need to use these guys right here. Can you use these guys? Yeah. I bet you there's some pretty good feet in here. I bet you some of these guys could run this gym as fast as lightning. As I look at this text, in order for these feet to go to the right place, Philip had to listen to the Spirit of God. Let me say this. When I was in Africa, and when I've been here, the best times that I've ever shared the gospel are the times that I first prayed and said, God, would you lead me? Would you show my feet where they should be walking today? Secondly, I want you to see in verse 30, it says, Philip ran hither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest what thou readest? The second thing we're going to need to use if we're going to share the gospel is our ear. Show me your ears. How many of y'all have ears? Some of you have big ears like elephants, and some of you have small ears, and some of you, when your parents talk to you, have a hard time hearing, don't you? Sometimes your teachers say something to you, and you're like, huh, what did they say, all right? If we are going to be able to share the gospel, we need to have ears. You say, why do I need to have ears? I'm the one that's supposed to be talking. No, before you can share the gospel, people need to ask you questions. He says, I don't understand. And if we're going to be a people that share the gospel, then we need to first be a people that listen. Thirdly, I want you to see in verse 31, he says, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he should come up and sit with him. The third thing that we are going to need to have if we are going to share the gospel is time. Time. Time is one of those things that is required because we can't just uh, send a text message to somebody. We can't just uh, shout it out the window of our bus as we're driving down the street. Hey, you need to believe Jesus and just keep driving along. If we are going to share the gospel with people, it's going to take our feet going to where they are. It's going to take our ears listening to what they say and the questions they have. And then it's going to take us sitting down and spending time with people so that we can get to know them and we can uh, be a part of them. Verse 37, the Bible says, And Philip said, If thou believe with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe. Verse 37 tells us that, that uh, 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 Philip preached unto him about Jesus. Now, if somebody is going to share the gospel, they need to use their mind. Show me your mind. It's right up there, isn't it? I'm sure you all have some of the greatest minds in the whole school. Now, the impact of our mind is great. The mind is where we think. It's where we have knowledge. It's where we store information. And if somebody is truly going to share the gospel, you're going to need to use your mind so that others can know Jesus. That they know that he walked on water. That's a pretty cool story, isn't it? Know that he raised the dead. Know that he fed 5,000 people. Know that he uh, uh, forgave sin. Know that he died on a cross for the sins of all mankind. Know that his blood was shed to wash away all of our sins. But also know that on the third day, he rose victorious from the grave. And that all that would believe would have forgiveness and salvation if they simply would repent and turn to him. See, our mind must be filled with the right information in doing all of this. And so Philip preached unto him the name of Jesus Christ and spoke to him all of these things. And then in verse 38, we see the heart. He says, if thou wilt believe with all thine heart, thou shalt be saved in this. Now the heart and the mind are two different things. The mind is where we have information. Show me where your heart is. Heart is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Sometimes your heart makes you so happy that you can't stop giggling. Sometimes your heart is filled uh, uh, with things that make your eyes cry. But in, when it comes to the Bible, the heart is what God wants because our heart is the place where we make a commitment, where we say to God, 
I have information in my mind about you, but now I want my heart to be wholly given unto you. Believing is a commitment, okay? So we're going to need to use our feet that we would go to people. We're going to need to use our ears that we would listen with people. We're going to need to sit down and spend some time with people. We're going to need to use our minds if we're going to share the gospel, and we're going to need to use our hearts that people would understand that coming to Jesus is a commitment that they make, that they need Jesus. They don't need a church. They don't need a baptism. They don't need to just walk straight and look good and make sure their shirt is tucked in and their mask is up over their nose. If people are going to receive the gospel and receive forgiveness of sins, they are going to need Jesus and Jesus alone. And it's our responsibility to use our feet, to use our ears, to use our time, to use our mind, and use our heart so that people will know the gospel. If we never ask God to give us somebody to speak to, most of us will never share the gospel. But if we use and say, God, would you tell me? God, would you show me? Maybe someone in this school, you could say, God, would you help me to share the gospel with somebody in this school? Maybe someone in your neighborhood. Maybe someone you play soccer with or, or softball or football or basketball. You could say, God, I want you to direct me to the right person and then watch your feet walk. And then watch, listen to your ears. And then have some time to sit down. And then use your mind and use your heart just like we see take place in the Bible. You know what happened to me in Africa? I went into this village and I just began walking around with my feet. And then I began to sit down and listen to people. And they began to talk to me about what was going on in their lives. And I began to share with them what God had put in my mind about who he was. And then I opened my heart to them so that they would hear the gospel of Christ. And I told them that if they would also believe, it didn't matter if they were African. It didn't matter if they were American. It only mattered that they would ask Jesus to forgive them of their sin. And right now in Africa, there are people that just like you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because somebody used their feet, used their ears, used their time use their mind, and use their heart to share the gospel. Do you think you can do that? I think that we all can do that because God has commanded us, he's asked us, and he has equipped us to do it. And if God has called us to do it, he definitely will empower us to do it as well. Let me pray and we'll be finished. Father, we're grateful. Thank you for this time. Lord, I pray your favor upon this group of children. Uphold them. Uh, Lord, keep them safe from the things of this world and from evil, but Lord, allow them to go forth, empower them, use their feet, use their ears, God, use their time, their mind, their heart, that others would know and receive the greatest gift ever, the gift of salvation. Bring forth your blessings. May your will be accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Noah. 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 Thank you for watching our chapel. We hope you got the message loud and clear. Let's all bow our heads and talk to God. Dear Lord, we want to teach everyone the good news. Help us find an opportunity to teach others about you. Lead us to help our family members walk closer to you. Help us to show others about your love. Be with all the classes as they continue their day. Keep us all healthy. Amen. Well, sixth grade, I'm so proud of you. They worked really hard, and I hope you could hear the good news from them. And we want to thank Pastor Kevin for coming to North Star today to share with us. And sixth grade would also like to thank Mrs. Grace. I think she stepped out for a couple minutes, but she's in our, all of our great new music teacher here at North Star, and we really appreciate all of her help. And Mr. Olsen, who made this for a week all year. Wasn't that nice? Okay. Raise your hand if this is your first year at North Star. 
All right, we have lots of new kids, and we welcome you to North Star, because every month we have a chapel like this. And each one of you, look at me, each one of you are going to get a chance to come up here and perform a chapel for the rest of us. And you will be practicing with your teachers pretty soon. And at the end of every single chapel, the teachers give out special awards. You like that? Yeah. All right. Well, I have the first award is an academic award. An academic means it's all about your schoolwork. So I have an academic award today for somebody in the class who even though he has a very special talent that God gave him, he's very humble about it. And some people don't get to know their talent until they're older. But I'm pretty sure this person knows his talent already. And his talent is he knows all about numbers and how they work and what they do. And it's called math. And he is a marvelous mathematician. And everybody in the class already knows who it is. It's Dylan. Yeah. Okay, I have one more award. You can stay right here. You want them all to stay? Okay, we have one more award, and this is called a character trait award. And that's about your behavior, what kind of person you are. We have a lot of kids with very good character. The character trait that I was looking for this month was hard work. I, I looked for a student who was very hard working. I have lots of them. But this person, I think Mr. Grape, is going to want to put on the payroll because she works everywhere. She works in the library. She works in the cafeteria. She works hard in the class. And that's Kaylin Sparta. Okay, and now I'm going to ask the fifth grade teacher. All right, so in fifth grade, we also have an academic and a character trait award. So I'm going to start with my academic award. I found a reading detective in my class. Someone in fifth grade who jumped in both feet into the deep end of our reading literature circle. This student was able to make connections, was able to make predictions, was able to pull important passages from the text, and has just impressed me every time I have graded our literature circle roles. So my reading detective is Linnaya Jo. <laughs> For my character trait award, I found a student who is a joyful learner. I love to be joyful in the classroom. I can get a little silly, and I have someone in my classroom who just rolls with it, who will find the fun in the activities, who can bring it back in, you know, if we get a little too silly, has a good time bringing it in. So my joyful learner is Dominic Erner. tell me who won the awards for this month. The first one is a character trait award, and it is called the Spirit of Progress Seeker. So this student has worked hard to improve her grades and reading points. She has set a great example of setting goals and working hard, and this goes to Jay Lee Walsh. And the second student, I'm going to say theirs now because they're not here, but we can still clap for them. This is the Academic Award, and it is the Spirit of Excellence Award. It is for John Garofico, I think that's how you say his name. He gives 100% effort in all of his work and always strives not only to meet, but to go above and beyond expectation. His greater reflection of the effort.
Wow, third grade. As all of you that have been through third grade know, it's a big jump from second to third. And I was looking for the student that was able to leap into third grade and with the study skills, with the attitude and hard work. And it goes to Sebastian Zitz. Well, I was looking for someone with quick obedience, following all the procedures, having a happy heart, but always saying thank you. You know, just always any activity, he would be the first to come and say thank you. And that goes to Nicholas Evo. of a wonderful writer. Um, I am, she adds detail to every story, reading her weekend journal, you might just feel like you actually were there with her the whole time. She often chooses to write imaginative stories during the choice time, and I can't wait to see how much more she grows and develops as a writer and chosen Eliana. And for the Character Trait Award this month, this person displays the qualities of perfect patience. So this person displays um, that throughout the day with, um, when working on tasks, even when it is hard or might be a little bit difficult. Um, when interacting with other students, this person shows patience, she listens to others, finds solutions to problems, and remains calm in all the situations that happen throughout the day. And this person is a great example in our classroom of this trait of perfect patience. It is Aria. often even helps other students who are struggling with reading, and that student is Dominic. <laughs> and for our character trait award, I chose a student who's a very good listener, often the first one to listen and obey and follow directions, and that student is um, Kaylin Surat. Okay, now for the first grade, and this is Sorrentino's class, we're going to start with the academic award. So since the beginning of our daily AR reading and quizzing, this student uh, has uh, consistently read and quizzed every, almost every single day, okay? And in addition, this student is an eager, very enthusiastic reader, and so my enthusiastic AR Reader Award goes to Maylin. For my Character Trait Award, well, since the beginning of the school year, this student has consistently demonstrated the behavior of a student ready to listen and learn. Regardless of 
their classmates' behaviors and chatting going around. This student can be seen sitting at attention, hands clasped together, and with her eyes fixed on me. In, and she is so ready to learn. In fact, she has even given me full attention when we're in, when we're in a noisy hallway. What a role model. My ready to listen and learn award goes to Sydney. So my name is Mrs. James, if you don't know me, and I teach first grade. For the month of September, I was looking for a student who went above and beyond expectations in class. This student works carefully on all of his assignments, never rushing, but making sure he did his best work and that he worked neatly. Our AR goal for September was six points, and this student earned not seven, not eight, but 15 points. That is going above and beyond. So the above and beyond winner is Zachariah Derrider. For my character trait award, I was looking for a responsible student who listened well. When we are a good listener, we can help ourselves and help others around us to learn. I know this student was a good listener because she followed directions the first time, she raised her hands to answer questions, and she even asked good questions about what we learned. The Character Award winner for September is Alyssa Paternolo. And last but not least, my sweet kindergartners, um, choosing academic and character words is hard to do, and I have such a great class. Um, the student that I chose for this month for academic is someone who does his AR quizzes every night. He does two of them every night, and comes to school talking about them. He also loves to participate in classroom discussions while we're reading stories, and shows how well he's listening to the stories at school as well as at home. So my student for the academic award is Mason Banks. All right, so when I was thinking about character trait for September, I thought about kindness. Because when you start school, learning how to be kind to your classmates or new friends is a hard job sometimes. And what we've learned about what kindness looks like, what the Bible says about kindness. The student I chose for September's Character Trait Award is a student that demonstrated kindness from day one. He is always there to lend a helping hand without being asked. He will help a friend with their classwork, at lunch, walking in line. He helps friends clean up all the time. He's kind on the playground. Even this morning, he asked if he could help a friend. He kept helping this friend throughout the whole morning. So my kindness award goes to Finn Williams. Okay, congratulations everybody. Very good, let's give them all one last clap.